Hey everybody, I uh, just want to sit down for a couple minutes and uh, give you a quick lesson on why it is a waste of time to argue with other beekeepers, especially treating beekeepers, about treating or not treating. I have been dealing with people like this for many years now and uh, a couple years ago I just decided that it was a waste of my time and I wasn't going to do it anymore and so uh, I just want to show you a, a quick example of why that is. Uh, a little bit of backstory there's this guy named Paul who uh, keeps sending me emails after even after I've, I've asked him to stop asking these questions and I have refused to engage because as you'll see in a moment the questions are largely based on false premises and misunderstandings and so um, what I want to demonstrate with this is not not trying to get back at Paul or anything I'm I, I would like I would like it if he would if he would actually engage rather than just firing off emails and expecting me to correct his misunderstandings which I don't really see as my job so just just to answer the questions he has here and I'll show you how quick this is um, Beekeepers like this are, are going to, I don't know if it's willful, I don't know if they do it on purpose, but they're going to misunderstand what you have to say. And so it just becomes a waste of time in, in, in correcting their, their misassumptions, whether those assumptions are purposeful or not. How do you know your bees are feral? I don't, and I've never claimed they were. So, number two. You're surrounded by several commercial beekeepers and you're assuming you're catching only feral swarms. Why are you making this assumption? I'm not making that assumption. I've said that many times. Number three, given all the treated bees around you, how do you expect your bees to acquire mite resistant traits? They will or they'll die. And since they don't always die all the time, then I assume they have. It's really up to them. I don't, I don't care what they do. You stated in many presentations of yours that your drones fly faster than drones from treated hives. Has this been scientifically proven or is this pure conjecture and assumption on your part? That is pure conjecture and assumption on my part. Number five, if small cell and natural cell is the cure for the varroa issue, then why are top bar beekeepers losing hives to mites? I've never said that small cell and natural cell are the cure for the varroa issue. Why are top bar beekeepers losing hives to mites? Everybody loses hives to mites? I don't know that top bar hive beekeepers are losing any more than anybody else. I don't think that's been proven. Six. If PF 120s have been proven to slow down varroa reproduction to the point where mites are a non-issue, then why are your hives infested with mites? I don't think anything's been proven about PF 120 frames. If it has, I'd love to know about it. And why are your hives infested with mites? Nobody's proven that my hives are infested with mites. They seem to be doing just fine. Seven. On the same token, if your colonies are dripping with mites, how are you not sharing them and their associated viruses with neighboring colonies as well as feral honeybee population? Um, my hives are not dripping with mites. And nobody's ever demonstrated that they were. Um, in fact, I would, I would think one thing that is proven is that all hives share mites with all other hives. That's how mites spread. How is this a step forward in the evolutionary process? I can't answer a question that's based on a faulty assumption. Number nine. How are more mites better than less mites? Please explain. I don't I, I have never said that more mites are better than less mites. I've said that some mites are better than no mites so that the, the selection pressure can be maintained. But having some mites rather than no mites is a very different thing than having more, more mites rather than less mites. Number 10, please explain why you haven't considered the modified bond method as a viable option in order to breed for mite resistance. Um, I mean, this is a legitimate question, one of the 12. The reason why I don't use the modified bond method is because it is further away from pure natural selection than the bond method is. The bond method is basically natural selection. You just let them die. For myself, there's no, I see no reason 
not to just do that. It works just fine. I don't see any reason to take half measures. Number 11. If you kill colonies infested with AFB, why are you not prepared to kill colonies infested with a heavy mite load? Uh, I don't kill colonies infested with AFB. I recommend other people do who aren't experienced beekeepers just to keep, you know, I, I don't think people should mess around with things they don't understand, so if you're not an experienced beekeeper and you find AFB in your hives, you should probably burn them. Second part of the question, how are you not creating mite bombs when you have such high mite levels in your colonies? Please explain. Um, first of all, it's never been proven that I have such high mite levels in my colonies. My colonies have never been tested for mites. So that's a faulty assumption. And um, I would say I do occasionally have hives that die of mites. And the other hives that I have nearby don't also die of mites. So that's the number one reason why I fundamentally disbelieve the idea of mite bombs. And I'm not causing mite bombs and nobody else is either because it just doesn't, I just don't see it. Number 12, you've stated in several presentations that you believe there is no specific threshold that bees can deal with mites. The Oregon State Beekeepers Association says otherwise. Please explain this contradiction. It's not a contradiction. It's a difference of opinion. Those are the questions he keeps sending me. I'm, I'm literally looking at dozens of emails here, and I have, I've offered many times to have a real conversation with him over the phone, uh, and I recommend you do that. If you get in, in, in an argument with someone on the internet, ask to talk to him on Skype or Zoom or on the phone. The thing about the internet is it, it creates an artificial barrier between people to where, uh, you've seen these videos on YouTube That's very much like social media, I think. It, it creates a barrier of anonymity that allows people to misbehave, say things that they wouldn't say in person. So when it comes to a real argument or discussion, I just don't do those online anymore. If we're going to have a real argument or discussion, we can, we can talk to each other as human beings. Otherwise, I'm not interested because it's a waste of time. And furthermore, since I know that treatment-free beekeeping works, and people like uh, Paul have, Paul's very specifically told me that he doesn't believe that I'm actually a treatment-free beekeeper. He believes that I'm lying because treatment-free beekeeping has been proven scientifically to be impossible. See, the, the reason why I consistently refuse to offer the sort of evidence that you're looking for is because... You take the words of somebody like Michael Bush and I, when we say, when I say I've been keeping bees for nearly 16 years treatment free, Michael Bush has been keeping year, bees for six, 17 years treatment free. He's actually been keeping bees for 40 years off and on, but had some issues with mites initially. But since he started on small cell the year before I did, um, he hasn't lost all his bees. And so, Basically, all you have to say about that is that I'm a liar, and he's a liar. You couldn't say it any better. Okay, fair enough. We're on the same page. I mean, it would be an awful lot of work to maintain this lie for so long, and for what reason, I'm wondering. I don't know. Because you're lazy? <laughs> I don't know. So, just just for conjecture's sake... Do you think that I don't have bees at all? Or do you think that I'm actually treating and lying about it? I don't know. I have no idea what you're doing. But I'm just lying. Pretty much. But you don't <laughs> know how or why. It, it doesn't make any sense. And if it doesn't make any sense, it's not true. If it doesn't make any sense, it's not true. Where did you get your science education? Where did you get your biology? I asked first. 
here in Thunder Bay, in Canada. Okay. Fair enough. I grew up here. Uh, so do you think I'm just keeping up this lie for the profit, maybe? Uh, I can answer that. Okay. I mean, you're you're making an, a contention, but you're not providing any evidence for it. All right. I'm, I'm looking at six hives right there, and I've got three in the front yard, and I've got more elsewhere. So... You, you can't tell me that anything's been disproven because it's sitting right there. I, I don't know what more to tell you. But the overall point is, even if you were to actually prove something, if I can, if I can point to those hives and say, those are my hives and I've kept bees treatment free for 16 years, he, he doesn't have to believe it. He'd just say that I'm lying. Um, and when you do the same to people, they will also just say that you're lying. I mean, there's there's ultimately nothing that you can prove, nothing to prove. Do your thing, and when other people are ready to come around to listen to facts, they will. Because you can't change people's opinion through debate. All you're going to do is um, you're going to entrench them in their position, you're going to be entrenched in your position. You both are going to be more sure of your point of view than you started, even though you both are saying opposite things. So be humble about what you know. Be humble about facts. Um, understand that, that you can't prove anything. And that there's no point. And don't waste your time. You should be having fun keeping bees. And if you're not having fun, um, try tree trimming, or house painting, or videography. Just do something else. You know what? I would like um, for you to have uh, maybe Randy Oliver on your podcast. That'd be amazing. I mean, I, I really respect him and admire him as a beekeeper and as a scientist. Um, he's great. To what end? Oh, just so that you could explain your theory to him and he could explain his to you. You guys can uh, debate. What have I told you a dozen times about debating? Doesn't solve anything. Very good. Let's move on.